Welcome back to Inside Sports, and my guest is Vicki Brick, and she's been telling us all about what she's doing now. But we got to say, where have you been? You started out at McDonough School, and then you went to the University of Maryland and played for Brenda Freeze. When she came over, that was a big catch for the university, too, because she came from the Big Ten. Yep. As some people might forget, I think she was at Minnesota, wasn't yep. she? I, I believe she was coming off of a Coach of a Year campaign there. Had a great yeah. turnaround. Yeah. Well, the guy that's coaching the uh, men's team now, uh, I remember him, Tubby Smith. He won the national championship at Kentucky. Yep. And then they fired him at Kentucky and he went oh, to yeah. Minnesota. <laughs> but he played at Great Mills High School down in uh, St. Mary's County, Maryland. And he was good there and then he went to high point and then on to bigger fame as a coach yeah he's been doing great things oh yeah good guy he was a good guy but I'll tell you one thing we played him at St. Mary I was on the staff at St. Mary's College so since he was from down there we scheduled his high point school to come in and play St. Mary's so uh, I cost him the game you did how well before every game, the coach would give me the scorebook and have me fill in the starting lineup. Well, I made a mistake on the number. Oh, no. And the other scorekeeper caught it because I didn't keep score, but, you know, our scorekeeper, he didn't make it up. It was me that had put it up, and their scorekeeper caught it, got a technical foul, and we lost by one point. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's to blame? Yeah. And I didn't even step on the court. <laughs> Anyway, so Maryland, when you were there, they were pretty good, too. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to play. I came into Maryland at 99. I was fortunate enough to play two years with Coach Weller in the historic Coldfield House, and I would play two years with Coach Freeze at Comcast. So I had the best of both worlds. And we were, I believe, after my, coming into my freshman year, the year before, they'd only won six games. They had a, had a tough year, and as a freshman, I was determined to kind of come in. I'm like, guys, we got to play postseason. We're going to have a winning, winning record. And my freshman year, we turned it around. I think we ended up 16 and 15 and went to the WNIT. And I believe we got to the quarterfinals of the NIT. So that was an unreal environment or experience as a freshman to come in. Ended up starting as a freshman and led the ACC in steals and was, and was third in assists. So I was very fortunate to come into that situation. And then my sophomore year, I actually tore my ACL. Um, so that was tough mentally, more, more so mentally than physically to get, to get through that. Um, but we, throughout my career, we were kind of on the brink. You could tell like big things were coming. And then when, I could, I'll never forget when Coach Freeze and her staff came on campus, I said, look guys, in a couple years, we are going to win a national championship. And everyone on the team committed to that. And we knew, you know, we. It might not happen during our tenure, but what we could do is help recruit top level kids, um, commit to the program, and then be around us to, to support it. And it was amazing that I graduated in 2004 and they ended up winning the national championship in 2006. And to Coach Freeze's credit, she went back and got her first two classes national championship rings because she said that we played such a huge part in that team and I know that I took a lot of honor and, and all the girls I played with took a lot of pride in saying that we helped to really start the, the current run that they're on. Well, I'll tell you what, you've set a, a high standard for not only the women's team, but the men's team. Oh yeah, well, I, I, you know, as I talked to a lot of people, Marylanders love Terp sports, Maryland athletics, everyone's a Terp fan. And I talked to a lot of guys in the Baltimore area and I, and I say like, I, I feel so lucky because I was there. The women's basketball team was on the up and up. The men's team won the national championship in 2002. The football team was going to the Orange Bowl and was going to bowl games and doing a lot of stuff. So I was really there at like the pinnacle of the recent sporting era, you know, success. So I know Turgeon and his staff, they're new. They, I, I, I know they're going to do big things. I have a lot of confidence in them. It's tough right now with the transition. You think of the kids, there's been some unfortunate injuries and they're, they're learning a whole new system. So I think people are patient now. I'll give them a year or two. They got some good kids coming in. I think the future's promising for them. I think so too. And he's actually done a good job coming off, uh, you know, where people said, well, Gary's gone and we're not going to have a team anymore. And the guy went to the NBA, uh, what Williams, what's it? What's Jordan his? Williams. Jordan Williams, yeah. Yeah. He went to the NBA and he figured that they're not going to do anything, but I thought they did very well. Yeah, they've had a solid season. They, 
pretty much beaten everyone they're supposed to, to beat. I know they had a couple of tough losses near the, the end of the, the year, but that win against Miami was a nice win, showed some fight from the kids. And I think that the coaches are working the recruiting circuit hard. Every time I talk to people from Montgomery County and in Baltimore, they said they either see Turgeon or someone on his coaching staff at the big games, which is so key. There's so much talent in this Baltimore, D.C., uh, area and it's it's exciting for me as a Terps fan and player to see the men's coaches getting back involved in the community and, and getting involved at the high school level. Well you know when I was at St. Mary's and we used to recruit I would go after the reserves more than I would the starters because I figured St. Mary's wouldn't have that big a chance to get the superstars so I'd get the reserves, the ones that were playing against the superstars every day in practice. Yeah. Figuring at least they if they had any brains at all they would have picked up something <laughs> playing against guys like that and, and it worked we got some good deals out of there but I really think uh, I was a little disappointed in Etzel because there was a kid from uh, Calvert County that went up to Connecticut and set all sorts of rushing records up there when Etzel was up there so I figured you know he have a good handle in this area and all like that so yeah hopefully the new guy they brought back the guy that was two and 26 at new mexico coach loxley loxley yeah i um i i don't know as much about etzel but i was at maryland when lox lox as we call him was at maryland and he did a great job developing bruce perry lamont jordan chris downs a lot of um the acc you know eight top running backs and he's very he went to towson but he's very tied in to the Montgomery County, PG County, DC, Baltimore, Pennsylvania, like this whole corridor here. I know he has a lot of connections. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm positive, hoping that he's successful and brings some stuff to the table. Well, we hope he is, but after all, he was the chief recruiter for New Mexico too when he was two and 26. So yeah. I'm, I'm remaining a little bit, but I actually did a show uh, with Lamont Jordan at Union Station, um, many years ago when they had a great flood down in Princeville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the guests with him and uh, a couple other local area people and uh, to raise money for that thing. Yeah. Uh, that big flood that they had had down there. And Lamont, I got to talk to him and he, I thought he was a pretty positive guy too. He's a great guy and he's always been a huge supporter of the women's basketball team. Uh, even when Coach Weller was there and we would practice at Cole, Maryland has a six week winter session and we normally have practice players come to guys come to our practice but a lot of times during the winter break the guys go home. So what we would do is we would recruit some of the football players and it's their off season but they need to stay in good cardio shape. So we would recruit them and have them come up and play with us and Lamont loved playing pickup with us and he would always be there and he would and not only would he enjoy playing pickup with us or practicing with us but he would then be at all the games he traveled to our ACC tournaments. He's a huge booster and it's really cool that he how much he's still been involved with the women's basketball team. Well that's great because uh, a lot of schools you see a lot of that sometimes you don't see it but I think it makes for good when the men support the women's programs and the women support the men's programs. Yeah definitely. I but I, I'll tell you uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say that I was sorry to see Maryland drop a lot of those sports where they used to get a lot of good publicity and and uh, I thought that was bad because they had made a commitment to those people that they bought there and then all of a sudden saying, well, you know, bye-bye. Yeah, well, I know it was a tough, Kevin Anderson came in with a t just a tough situation and unfortunately, we, you know, it's funny, as an as a athlete, when you're in the middle, thick of things, you don't really realize the whole back end stuff, but now as you're removed, you realize how much it is really a business. And at the end of the day, you, you have to make money, you have to produce revenue, and it's a shame that unfortunately the athletes are the ones who who take the hit and who are affected. And I know some guys on the, on the men's track team who ran track when I was there. They came to every football game. They're at the women's basketball games. Like they were huge supporters of all the sports. And I think men's or uh, I think the uh, the swimming team might be affected and cheer. I'm not sure of all of them, but it's really just, it's a shame. And you hate to see sports at any institution get cut but especially like the track team when they have such a history and when Nehemiah right, ran Nehemiah. there and 
it's it's sad because you know, like I said, the kids are the ones that take the hit. And then looking back now for the future, the ones whose teams are cut, will they really still feel as tied to the school since the pro since the university no longer offers a men's track program or swimming or diving and that kind of stuff? Well, that's that's what I hated to see because a lot of those minor sports are big publicity for them. Yep. And good publicity. Yeah, exactly. And some of their other sports like football might not have the good reputation that, yeah. that some of those teams do. But anyway, let's get a pick here. Who do you th how do you think Maryland's going to do in the women NCAA? I think they're going to go deep. The Terps are tough. I love their toughness. Their, um, Alyssa Thomas was ACC Player of the Year. She is legit. She reminds me a lot of Marissa Coleman. Um, as like a three guard, she can shoot, penetrate. She has a nice little stop and pop, plays defense, rebounds like crazy, and she is this thick, man, she's a beast. So she carries a team, she makes big shots, but she has a lot of supporting players as well. Lynetta Kaiser provides great senior leadership as a post. Um, and some of the guards who are like Breen Mosley, um, and some of the, I can't remember all of them off the top of my, off, off the top of my head, but I, they, have a, they have great chemistry. I feel like they have a lot of momentum heading into the tournament, so I definitely, I'd love to see them get to the Final Four and make a run at it. They might. I mean, you know, if everything falls in place, they very well could. As you know, in, in all type of sports, it's the time and the place. If it's there, it'll be there. Yep. So, and I think they've got an excellent chance. And of course, they've got a great coach in Brenda Freeze, as well as the, all those good players that she's gotten to go there, including you. Yeah, it's been an honor. I loved every second at, at the University of Maryland. And then, how about Johnny Holiday? You like him, don't you? Johnny is Johnny's my man. He always took care of me. He was great, very supportive of the women's team. Oh, I always yeah. loved doing interviews with him. And every time I see him, it's like. Just like yesterday, you know. Well, if you see him, mention Bill McCaffrey because he actually did a commercial for this show. Oh, really? Yeah. Stay tuned and listen to McCaffrey. Yes. <laughs> no, Johnny's a good guy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what do Chris Weller and Mike Miller have in common? Chris Weller and Mike Miller. The president of the Senate, Mike Miller. But they both went to Maryland? That's one. But the others, they both went to Surrattsville High School, too, oh. in Clinton, Maryland. Did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was great having you. And good luck in your business and good luck in Maryland. And hopefully we'll see you around many times because you're a winner. Thank you. And Thanks for having me. you're still winning with brick bodies. No bricks. She's not going to throw any at me. <laughs> I know some of you wish she would have brought a big brick to hit me upside the head, but... I didn't have my helmet, so I couldn't allow her to bring the brick. You all have a great weekend, and let's uh, root for that Maryland women's team as they get the big selection Sunday, and let's hope they get a one that they can really squash right from the start. Go Terps. Go Terps and go Bricks. Yep, brick Bodies. Brick Bodies. Remember, don't forget, Vicki Brick, great guest. And her team is going to go for the national championship this Sunday, as her brick team has already been a national champion. <laughs>